Hello there boys and girls, my name is Paul Verizes and welcome to my Clue Scroll Iron Man series hound hunt, where the aim is extremely simple, attain the Bloodhound pet, starting on a fresh level 3 Iron Man account. If you're new around the channel and fancy catching up on all of the progress that we've made so far, then feel free to check out the video description for a link to the series playlist as well as a full list of the series rules. But as always guys, sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello there everyone and welcome back to episode number 45 of my Clue Scroll Iron Man series Hound Hunt. So just in case you missed the last episode, I finally got around to completing Dragon Slayer 2 which is the quest I've been putting off for the best part of two months now. And then after the quest I slithered over to Vorkath and luckily managed to pick up the head on only 2kc which means we've now acquired the Ava's Assembler which is another huge upgrade for the account. And so with Dragon Slayer 2 out of the way, this now means that we've only got one more Grandmaster quest left to complete on the account now, without obviously being Monkey Madness 2, and so completing it is going to be one of the main goals for today's episode. And I also want to be basically Zora ready by the end of this episode as well, which means I'd like to have snagged a Zenite from Demonic Gorillas after Monkey Madness 2 has been completed, which I'll then turn into a Ring of Suffering. And uh, also, I want to level up both my herb lot and construction to add some well needed upgrades to my player owned house. But before I crack on with Monkey Madness 2, I've saved myself up two more elite caskets which I got from raids to start off today's episode with, so let's see if they're any better than the stinkers that we had last time. Well, at least we got a full crystal key there, but I mean, I guess a palm tree seed isn't too bad. And next up, just just really standard elites, to be honest. Nothing really to uh, to report there. Eyes of Gluffrey, done. And Enlightened Journey, done. So now we've finally got all of the quest requirements to start Monkey Madness 2. Oh, is he gone? Oh, he's not gone. Come on, I've got five, five prayer points. Come on, die. Is that it? He's gone. All right. Like, genuinely, that was so boring. <laughs> uh oh. This doesn't look good. I did it. Yay. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> so around four and a half painful hours and one disappointing boss fight later and that is Monkey Madness 2 finally completed on the account and a big shout out to everyone in the Twitch chat that helped me out during this quest. So now that Monkey Madness 2 is out of the way, we've finally unlocked Demonic Gorillas which means I can start grinding them in search for the Zenite Shard which I can boost up and turn into the Ring of Suffering and eventually I will be back to get all of the Zenite Jewelry on the account but for now I just want the ring so I can start grinding Zora. And yet another miss level, there is level 96 HP now. Hmm, so I'm not really sure how to feel about this elite to be honest. It's nearly twice as rare as a Zenite, but I guess I can never be too upset with another elite. And here we go, that didn't take too long. Here's the elite that we got from Demonics. Oh my god, okay. I panicked a little bit. Every time I see a 7 um, reward elite, I get very happy. But there is another master clue. Let's see if we can do the first step. And uh, yeah, that's completely fine. There's step 1 done. Right, what are we going to get next? Um, okay, that is a long one, but I think all of those are fine. Part 1, done. Part 2, Done. And part three, done. And next up, another Joral. And following that, yet another Fallow step. And I'm still praying to avoid that Armadil Helm step for as long as I can. Alright, what's it going to be this time? Please be something easy. And it is a Warrior Guild token. Easy peasy. There you go, Fallow. Alright, what's step number five going to be? And it is a Sherlock step. So that's not actually too bad now. I can do over half of the steps that you can give me. But unfortunately, guys, this isn't one of them. Still quite a few mining levels off being able to do this one. But on the positive side, I am planning on doing quite a lot of Motherload Mine later on in this episode as I want to complete the Falador Hard Diary so I can kill the Giant Mole for all of my Toad Flax Herb Lore secondaries. And for that, I will need to get myself a full set of Prospector. But for now, we're going to have to say goodbye to yet another Master Clue, unfortunately. Oh my god, yes, there it is. That definitely makes up for having to drop that Master Clue it only took me 178 demonic kills to snag the Zenite Shard. I'm actually so happy to have gotten this thing pretty early. Like, doing demonic soft task was starting to become quite a big pain, I'm not gonna lie. So all I need to do now to make the suffering is buy yet another Onyx from the Tizhar area, then combine it with the Shard and then get a plus four crafting boost with my Mushroom Pie and turn it into the Ring of Suffering. There's the Onyx. There's the Zenite, and there is the Ring of Suffering, the first of all Zenite jewelry pieces on the account. And even though the ring does give some pretty decent stats on its own, before I take it over to Zora, I need to whack an imbue on it, so I reckon about an hour AFK at Nightmare Zone should give me enough points. There we go, that didn't take too long, but that is the Ring of Suffering I obtained. So now that that's out of the way, it's time for me to start working on all the skill and grinds that I need to uh, upgrade my POH. Starting off with getting level 82 Herb Lore, so I can boost up to 87 and make the anti-venoms that I need for the Ornate Rejuve pool. So I reckon it's probably a good time that I got around to collecting everything that's been in my kingdom for the past month and a half now. And like I said, I am planning on training both my herb lore and construction during today's episode. So obviously the herbs and logs from this kingdom will really help me out with those goals. But Jesus, 5.6k t clogs, nearly 300 Avanto. That is so much XP right there. Well, there's the first of hopefully many herb lore levels this episode whilst cleaning all of those kingdom herbs up to level 79 now. So now that all of those herbs have finally been cleaned, I've started to gather all of the secondaries that I need to turn them into pots. And I've basically got everything that I need other than the bird's nest for my toad flax to turn them into brews. And I have been trying to do 
do as many birdhouse runs as I can for the nests, but I reckon that the best way for me to get the thousand or so that I need is by doing the giant mole and trading all of the mole claws and skins in for bird nests. So in order to do the mole effectively, I really need to have completed the Falador Hard Diary, as one of the rewards is an indicator that tells you exactly where the mole is in the lair after it burrows. So the only real requirement that I've got left for the diary is to get myself a full set of Prospector from Movelo Mine. And I've currently got two pieces of the set already, so it shouldn't really take all that long, and I would have needed to get full Prospector for a Master Clue step in the future anyway, so it's off to Movelo Mine that I go. And also, I forgot to mention that completing the diary itself will give me another free 25k Herbal XP as well, which always helps. So that's one step closer to being able to mine Runite for the Master Clue step. There is level 75 mining now. There's level 76 for good measure as well. And there we go, finally. After a good few hours of AFKing, there is full Prospector required on the account, which like I said, is another Master Clue requirement ticked off, and now means that I've got basically everything I need for the Falador Hard Diary. And just like that, there are all of the fairly easy diary tasks done. There's all the medium tasks done. So I quickly needed to knock out Grimtails to unlock the Dwarven Helmet for the Fally Hard Diary, so there is yet another quest out of the way. And also, the Dwarven Helm does give some pretty sick crush attack bonus, so I'm sure we'll be seeing some action alongside my Dragon Warhammer in the not-too-distant future. So, now the very last task that I need to finish off the entire Hard Diary, appropriately enough, is to take down the Giant Mole. And I forgot to mention earlier that another huge benefit of completing the Fally Hard Diary is that both the Mole skins and claws will drop noted, which means trips can last for a very, very long time. So about four Darrow Kits later, and there is every single Fally Hard Diary task done. And there we go. And like I said before, every single time that we get some bonus XP from anywhere, it's getting chucked straight on Herblor. So this should be another free 25k Herblor XP. So I've just hit over 200 mole KC now, and I believe I need to get 400 kills in total, as uh, each mole is essentially three birds' nests. Jeez, so many combat levels flying in this episode. There is level 92 strength now. And there we go, many hours and a few hundred dead moles later, and that should hopefully be enough bird's nests for all of our toad flax. Damn, now that is a fitting number of nests to end on, including the ones that I had in the bank from doing birdhouse runs, but as well as that I got nearly 100 rings of recoil and also 8 spirit seeds, which is actually pretty good as I don't believe I had any spirit seeds at all prior to this, and it is a master clue step that requires you to teleport to a spirit tree that you've planted yourself, so that is effectively another master clue requirement ticked off now. And there we go, another level 80 stat to the collection, there is level 80 herb lore now. So we're just about to hit level 81 herb lore, so now I don't have to boost up to make my bruise anymore. And also, in other news boys and girls, you guys might remember a few weeks ago now where I was talking about the Golden Gnome voting for this year. Well, I was just watching the official live stream, and it turns out that your boy Pulverizes has only gone and made the nominations for the best new old school RuneScape content creator, which, like, I genuinely cannot believe that I'm saying. I absolutely love the community that we've built around the channel, and I cannot wait to see where we take things in the future. So, thank you guys so, so, so much for the opportunity, and you have no idea how much it means to me. And so, with all that said, if you once again fancy voting on the official Golden No nominations this time, I'll chuck a link down below in the video description. And if I once again just so happen to be your new favourite old school RuneScape, get content creator, then I'd never ever say no to a vote. But anyway, let's get back to doing some Herblore. And here we go guys, finally. After a few days of gathering secondaries, there is level 82 Herblore, which now means I can plus 5 boost up with the spicy stew and make the anti-venoms that I need for the ornate rejuve ball. But before I crack on with the construction grind, I reckon we should celebrate the Golden Gnome nomination with a few more elite caskets that I've once again saved up from raiding in the background. And uh, first up, again, nothing really interesting, 321k, another magic seed, and uh, lost up an afro, oh my god. That is some top tier fashion scape right there. And I, I say it all the time, but I can't believe we still don't have a duplicate um, elite reward yet. I think now we only need six or seven more before Master Clues have officially become unlocked. Damn, this thing actually looks sick. And like I mentioned in the last clip, I have been raiding quite a lot in the background. And I believe we started off this episode on about 40 or 50 raids, KC. And I'm currently seeing on 109 now. But unlike I usually am on this account, I hadn't been too lucky with any drops in my name from raids. Although I had seen a Dragon Hunter crossbow on about 70 KC, which I did get a nice little split from. And then also another deck not too long later. But then on stream, during the same day that I got nominated for the Golden Gnome, I did manage to see... Good luck, good luck. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, boys. Come on. Now you big lizard. And he's gone. Oh, zoom in. And now, we sit back. We recline. And we await our fate. Come on. <gasps> oh! I got a purple! I got a purple! I got a purple! Oh my god, I got a purple. It actually happened, but I got a purple. Oh my god. Literally, this is actually the best day ever. Oh my god. Okay, what's it gonna be? Bro, he's spamming no way. He's spamming no way. What's it gonna be? Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, yes. Finally, it took me 101 raids. We finally got our first purple. The Dexterous Prayer Scroll. Oh my god. I can't even use it yet. I don't have the prayer level. Oh my god, yes.
Okay, so it's the next day now, and I've calmed down a little bit since getting my first purple last night, but honestly, like I said in the clip, it was such a perfect day. Nominated for a golden omen, also getting my first purple on stream in the same day is just crazy. And also, like I said in that clip, I don't actually have the prayer level to use reggae yet, but luckily, I do have enough bones saved up in the bank to get me the levels, so I guess it's off to the world the ultra I go. Only gonna miss it, but there's 71 prayer now. 72, 73, and there we go, level 74 prayer, which means reggae has now been unlocked. And I also just realized that we're up to 115 combat in total now, but I actually don't think that Rigger could have come at a more perfect time with the account being just around the corner of starting the Zoro grind. So the only thing left for me to do now before I start slapping the big snake is to get myself six more construction levels for all the POH upgrades that I need. So as per usual now, every time that I decide to trade some construction on the account, I can literally hear my cash stack screaming at me. Seven mil GP later, and that is all of my mahogany logs turned into planks. So I'm going to start off the construction grind by doing some mahogany homes training and see what level that gets me up to. As per plank, you get so much more XP using that method than building furniture in your POH. And of course I've missed it, but there is level 78 construction now. 79. So I'm up to 70 contracts in total now, and there is the plank sack acquired which will definitely speed up my XP per hour. 80, 81, and there we go finally. Level 82 construction has been achieved, which now means I've got all of the levels that I need to start upgrading my POH. There's the fairy ring built, and also there's the spirit tree as well, which does actually work for the master clue step. And there's finally a portal nexus added as well. So the only real big upgrade left to build in my house is the rejuvenation pool, and for the highest tier one, I actually need to get myself 10 anti-venoms, but because I don't have the level to fish the scales, I'm gonna have to take down my first ever Zora on the account for the scales. And it's dead. That wasn't too bad actually, but it's going to take me a little bit of time to learn the rotations, but not a bad first solar drop, but we only really needed the scales, I guess. Hey, there we go, that didn't take too long. There's the plus five herbal level boost that I needed to make the anti-venoms, and luckily we just about had enough scales to make ten of them. There's the fancy pool built, so all I need to do now is get a plus five construction boost to make the ornate one. Hey, and there we go, finally, after 25 boost attempts and a couple of hellrat behemoth trips, there is the best pool in the game built inside of our POH, and I cannot tell you guys how ready I am to start grinding Zora now. So to finish off today's episode, I'm going to attempt to get a few more Zora kills and see if we can end with anything spicy. So, 9 kills later and nothing particularly interesting so far, but I am starting to get the hang of Zora now as I've never actually done it before on any account, but this grind is actually going to be so useful for the account in terms of skill and supplies and hopefully elites as well, which are a 1 in 75 drop. And before we go ahead and crack open the final caskets that I've got saved up in the bank, I want to give a massive, massive shout out to my man Max who helped me finally sort out the absolute scrap heap that was my house. We spent about 4 hours on Discord together fixing it, and I'm not going to lie, it actually feels so good to have a useful house now. And even though we've been making so much necessary account progress in today's episode, there was absolutely no way that I could end it without at least cracking open a couple of caskets for you guys. So I've saved myself up three more hard caskets as well as two more elites, and as always, we'll start off with the hards and end with the elites. And uh, not really too much to say about that. I've been, I feel like I've been saying that quite a lot about these caskets recently. Nearly at 400 hard clues in total now. And, I mean, I can't really complain with Alcables, considering I've sunk maybe 10, 11 mil into uh, construction this episode. But anyway, last two elite caskets for today? Are you sure that's an elite casket, Jagex? Like, you can get every single one of those items from a hard casket. What is that? And the last one for now. I mean, I'll take some summer pies. I do need to get one more agility level for the um, shortcut to get to Zora from the fairy ring. So I'll, I guess I can use them for now. And so as we always try and do now, whenever we get a new elite unique, I've molded today's fashionscape around the afro that we picked up earlier. And I'm not going to lie, I thought this would look pretty damn hideous, but it actually hasn't come out too bad, you know. And so I was thinking here, guys, why not take a little trip down memory lane and end off today's episode by having a little peek inside of the collection log? Because it has been quite a while since we last did so now. So we kicked off today's episode on 76 elites open with 17 out of 89 unique rewards obtained, and we are now sitting on 84 open with 18 out of 98 rewards crossed off, so we are edging ever and ever closer now to unlocking master clues so we can finally crack open those 7 caskets that we've got sitting in the bank. But with all that said guys, that's going to be all from me for today's episode of Palantun, and as always, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed the amount of progress that we've made in today's episode, and as always, a massive, massive shout out to all the legends out there in the community that support me, and once again, thank you so, so much for giving me the opportunity to be nominated for a Golden Gnome, it honestly means the world to me. And an extra big end of video shout out to Slim Shady, who was too scared to make a hardcore Iron Man, Mr. Ironscape, whose Iron Man account instantly makes women fall at his feet, the Golden Corral, who does the best buffets, but is also one of the most generous people we know, Hot Wing, who can't handle spice anymore, so had to change his name to Lettuce Rage, Sage OSRS, who is already better at rage than I am, Thomas P624, Sam V Lamb, and also Ace Set for always lurking and being early into the stream chat, and finally JBT, who constantly planks Demuta Dal. But as always, guys, until next time, stay safe and I'll see you very soon.